Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football Dill, Mario Cristobal, the Miami Hurricanes go into the swamp and put together, I think you just described it as a dominant performance. That was by far the most complete performance we've seen under Mario Cristobal during his tenure at Miami. It's been no secret that, you know, we've kind of been on the hype train for this Miami Hurricanes program heading into 2024. And I think for all the reasons that we were excited about this team, it was kind of on full display Saturday afternoon. I think it obviously starts with Cam Ward, but you just saw how damn tough this team is along the lines of scrimmage as well. And I think that was a large part of us believing in Miami is it Cam Ward put on an absolutely spectacular performance. We're going to get into that. But what kind of made me believe in this Miami Hurricanes team, even just beyond the addition of Cam Ward, was you know, how good this team is along the line of scrimmage. And you kind of look at the landscape of the ACC, right? Virginia Tech goes down to Vanderbilt. Clemson gets beat bad by Georgia. Obviously, Florida State last weekend. You look at Miami in the ACC, Dill. I picked Miami to win the ACC. I'm coming out of week one feeling pretty dang good about our predictions heading into 2024. Want to get into a couple of big storylines in this football game and as always, to the Miami Hurricane fans, it, it's it been a blast talking this program. You guys have shown a ton of support, not only in the offseason, but over the last couple of days as we've talked about this game. We can't thank you guys enough. If you all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Much more importantly, let it fly in the comment section. We'd love to hear how you guys are feeling as well. And Dill, without further ado, I think we got to start with Cam Ward at the quarterback position. What would you think of his performance? I mean, Cam Ward was really, really good. I thought I, – I love that they balanced it out, though. They didn't only, like, go to Cam Ward. Yep. I mean, he was dominant and had a great game, but I think that was complement with a very strong rushing attack and a committed rushing attack. But, yeah, you're right. You saw the – like, just the playmaking ability he brings to that team, and that was a big, big thing. I mean, there were a couple times where, again, whether there was some pressure, whether guys weren't open immediately, and just his ability to create a little bit and make those big plays, it it really does complement and add on to what they can do in the running game. Yeah, I think uh, you made a really good point. Like, this is a Miami Hurricanes team that, again, one of the things that you love about this offense, there's a lot of different ways they can attack an opposing defense. And you add a guy like Cam Ward, I think – the thing I appreciate about Cam Ward the most is the playmaking ability that you just did not have with Tyler Van Dyke, right? When plays break down and you have to play a little bit of backyard football, all the great quarterbacks can do that. Someone like Tyler Van Dyke really struggled to do stuff like that. And the announcers kind of got at Cam Ward a little bit when he threw that interception early one. I love to see him just bounce back from that. But I think more importantly, if you're a Miami Hurricanes fan, you kind of have to live with some of those mistakes, because for every one interception that he's throwing, he's doing that fade away back of the end zone to, I believe, Jacoby George in the back of the end zone. Like, that's just how Cam Ward plays. And if you can get the Cam Ward that limits those kind of mistakes and has a lot of those kind of plays, like we saw Saturday afternoon, that's that's kind of how you win these football games here. But he also played well on rhythm. And I think especially Great. you saw that connection he has to Restrepo. I think that's going to be really dangerous. I mean, those two seemed in sync, like on that – that little option route or choice route he had that then Isaiah Restrepo hit that spin move after. Like, that's the type of play I think you really would like to see Miami be able to do more consistently because Tyler Van Dyke had that playmaking, that flash ability at times, but he also, I don't think, was always super steady in terms of being down in, down out, good enough to be really, really elite big moments. And I'm not even saying Tyler Van Dyke was the playmaker at Cam Ward as he just had the arm talent. He could make shock plays. But I really like the way Cam Ward – kept them kind of on schedule. And when he was supposed to hit the pass, he was supposed to make in the rhythm. He was supposed to hit him in allowing guys to make plays after the catch, just by being accurate, being on in sync. I, I really thought that was nice to see for that team today. That connection to Xavier Estrep was going to matter all season. Like you talk about money downs, like inevitably Miami's going to be in some closely contested football games in the third and fourth quarter. And it's going to be third and six, and you're going to have to move the chains that connection is going to matter. Like that's not the last time we're going to see Cam Ward, Xavier Estrepo, you know, kind of meet up. I think that's going to be one of the more dynamic quarterback wide receiver batteries that we see in the country. I think another thing I'd like to shout out in terms of the pass catchers, we kind of knew Xavier Estrepo would be that pass catcher one deal, the tight end involvement. Loved it. It, it kind of fires me up a little bit. Now you look at when we talked about this all off season, right? It, these hurricane tight ends are really talented. This is a Miami Hurricanes offense that is begging you to use the tight ends. Elijah Royal, 
and you saw Lofton get involved. If they can get difference maker capabilities and kind of pass catching capabilities from this tight end group, that's just a, a kind of another way this Miami Hurricanes offense can get after opposing defenses. And, and especially a Royal making the plays you want to see from your tight ends. It was great. A couple of highlight plays from that tight end spot that were maybe off of something unique, if you will, or a kind of a, a niche play. But just that ability to work the middle at a really high level be very difficult to deal with for linebackers and safeties. I thought he was kind of the guy who emerged to me as like, well, this is exactly what your tight end. This is what you need from your tight end every game. Just like being able to carve out the exact role I think they're looking for. From yeah, and then Isaiah Horton kind of emerging as that wide receiver that can work vertically down the field. Like we heard the rumors of Isaiah Horton putting it together. Obviously, I think you know a lot of the hype during fall camp it went to Sam Brown, the transfer who again, I don't think was his best football game. Probably got to come up with some of those catches. That being said, you can tell Sam Brown's going to play a massive role in this Miami offense. Dill Isaiah Horton working vertically, especially when you see teams probably start to load the box a little bit against this Miami hurricanes rushing attack, which we have to talk about in just a second. Isaiah Horton's one of those guys that if teams go to single high safeties, like work Isaiah Horton on the boundary because he's one of those wide receivers that, you know, can really stretch the field and create those game changing plays. Damian Martinez, I don't think it's necessarily the flashiest stat line. That being said, you talk about why you brought Damian Martinez into this Miami team. I think it was for games like this, especially in the first quarter, first half, when you're kind of the it's like the body blows, Dale. And as Michigan fans, like we kind of understand this one. Damian Martinez rarely gets tackled for less than three yards. That's massive. When you want your offense to stay on schedule, he was close to kind of busting a few ones. I'm sure we're going to see that the rest of the season. That being said, his ability to one run extraordinarily physical, which we knew, but then the patience and vision too, he's going to be a massive asset to this football team too. And especially getting him (laughs) out of horrible situations. I think again, when you get into those big games. And this was, again, I mean, obviously in the early stages, it wasn't like a wrap necessarily. They had to fight their way through yep. the first half. And obviously they kind of opened the floodgates in that second quarter a little bit. But early on, I mean, obviously you have the interception, you have a little bit of adversity. I think you're right. I mean, Damian Martinez's ability to never take negative plays pretty much consistently set that three yard floor for his rushes just by a yeah, that patience, that vision, that like running back stuff, but also just being an absolutely gritty, hard-nosed, tough running back. I think that was something Miami didn't really have a guy who could do that, and I think that contributed there to their inability to kind of commit to the run consistently, and that did put Tyler Van Dyke in some tough spots at times. I think if Damian Martinez in this offensive line can play like this physical style of football – I think that allows Cam Ward to play really comfortable, and he looked extremely comfortable. Yeah, you talk about like a cool, a cool cucumber, like that's that's basically Cam Ward. Uh, that's kind of it on offense. I, it was a dominant performance. Cam Ward looked great. I thought the rushing attack was extremely efficient, which is exactly what you're looking for. I think the explosive plays will come. Going over to defense, uh, we kind of said uh, we kind of like Miami along the line of scrimmage against this Florida offensive line that you know, I thought was going to be improved. I didn't think it looked that improved. Obviously, Florida, you know, Florida through three quarters had 92 rushing yards. 71 of them came on one play. I mean, Florida was consistently second and third and long. And when you live in third and long against this Miami Hurricanes pass rush, it's going to be a disaster. And you saw that. And I think on top of that, Reuben Bain played, what, one drive, went out with the injury. It kind of showed you how deep this Miami Hurricanes pass rush unit is, where Tyler Barron looked phenomenal. Elijah Alston looked great. Akeem Mesador, Dill, I would even shout out a guy like Ahmad Moten on the inside. We were talking about some depth that we wanted to see get built up on the inside of the defensive line. It sounds like Ahmad Moten is going to be a massive contributor on the inside of the defensive line. I thought he looked great. Yeah, he had a strong game. I mean, and that whole defense, that front seven especially, was really, really dominant. dominant. And, I think Elijah Austin was the guy who kind of shocked me on the in the way, frankly, played the run. I think we yeah, all knew he could rush the passer, but for him to play that physically along the line of scrimmage in that run game be really difficult to deal with for tight ends. I thought, again, their ability to stop that run really put Florida in a tough spot because they just don't have the tackles to keep up with in a really elite group and edge rushes. And I think you're right to say, like, that's kind of crazy that they were that dominant even without Ruben Bain. And, I mean, one of the things that you kind of noted, I appreciate how good these edge rushers are against the run. I mean, Florida knows a thing or two about an edge rusher and Prince Liu, who, 
yeah, was a really good pass rusher, but kind of was a liability at times against the run. And guys like Elijah Austin, who you brought in to be a pass rusher, was really good at setting the edge and playing the run. Same thing with Tyler Barron. So not only are these guys really good pass rushers, they show up on third and long. They're also really good stopping the run, getting into those third and longs. I think that's a massive they really, they really did a good job keeping those linebackers free. I thought yeah. Florida struggled mightily to pick those linebackers up. And now, you know, and Wesley Bassaint had both very, very strong games. Kind of what you'd expect, frankly. That's a Wesley Bassaint's really putting it together. He's going to be a really good football player for Miami. And that in the secondary, for by them far, to take away Eugene Wilson in the way they did, I thought was really impressive because you obviously saw what the first drive he got open. I think exactly what Florida would have wanted for him to catch the ball, have a little space to run. They get that first down. And aside from that, and until probably DJ Lagway got in and they started to get him back in the game a little bit. Florida did an excellent job of taking him away, and that was the one thing I think they knew, or, or Miami, I should say, did a really good job taking away. And that was kind of the one thing that could beat Miami, I thought, on the defensive side of the ball. And they, credit to Lance Gidry and that defense, and that secondary, they did what they had to do to pretty much remove him from that. Yeah, play. two things. One, I thought this the secondary was extremely sticky. Like I, When they were asked to play in man coverage and run down the field with wide receivers, there was not a lot of throwing windows for Grand March to work with. I think more importantly, they tackled well in space for the most part. I think Jaden Harris took a bad angle on that Montreal Johnson run. But outside of that, like tackled really well in the secondary. And I don't think there was a single busted coverage. Like there was no free plays for Florida to kind of get after, which is massive. When we were talking about a Miami Hurricane secondary that had almost nobody returning from last year's team. And I thought they looked really glued in a very good unit. Deal. The last thing kind of, you know, extracurricular, I might add, you see, and you noted it. I mean, Miami faced some adversity, right? Cam Ward throws the uh, throws the interception, second, maybe third play, third third drive of the game, immediately rebounds, has a phenomenal last three quarters. They give up the seventy one yard rush going into half. What does Cam Ward do? Two minute drill, goes down and scores a touchdown. At points over Mario Cristobal's first tenure, and even going back to you know the Manny Diaz days, you've seen Miami see that kind of adversity and kind of just fold, especially on the road, this team didn't fold. It didn't really give an inch. I kind of love – we all knew this Miami Hurricanes team was talented. The question was, can they come put it together as a football team? I, I You just went on the road to one of the hardest places in the country to play, face some adversity, and one handily. I think that speaks to where this Miami Hurricanes team is. Yeah, and especially not and you make any mistakes either. Like no, no penalties, no roughing the passer. Like Florida obviously had two of them, which were brutal. Yep. But they didn't make any of the mistakes Great. you saw last year. They kept their composure. Again, one game, you got to see it for the rest of the year. But that's, I think, almost to a T what you wanted Florida to look like. Ultra physical along both sides line of scrimmage, played winning football, and then Cam Ward played about as well as you could have expected or hoped he'd play. Yeah, and I think what's so exciting is I, I think this team only gets better. Like I, I think the big question mark, and, and you know I, I kind of really like this Miami team on paper, I think the big question mark was you got a lot of new faces going on the road into a hostile environment. How does this group come together? Uh, they came together really well week one. They're only going to get better as these new faces continue to gel within this Miami Hurricanes team. I'm really excited. They kind of got, I wouldn't say cakewalk schedule. Obviously, you got to take every game seriously. That being said, they got a schedule where they can do some serious damage going forward. We'll close it out there. Appreciate you guys rocking with the boys. The Miami Hurricane fans would love to hear from you guys in the comment section, and we'll talk to you all later. Peace.